Today's scripture reading is Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, the command to sacrifice Isaac. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am, he said. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and to go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father! And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he, and he said, Here I am, he said. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place. The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Here ends our reading for today. Today's lectionary reading is another challenging and disturbing story from the Bible. The story involves human sacrifice ordered by God and Abraham to sacrifice his own son. The story is presented as God testing Abraham. The fact of the matter is, why would God need to test Abraham or for that matter, anyone. The fact that God would test human beings indicate that God does not know about our true abilities or the strength of our character. So the idea of God testing us to find out information about us or to evaluate our character or our faith certainly does not make sense because that would indicate that God does not know. This means that God is ignorant, which would automatically indicate that such a being is not God. Yet, testing is precisely what God did to Abraham, or that is how the story was told. First of all, God promised to Abraham that God will make a great nation out of him. And this be began to happen when Sarah was 90 years old and God allowed her to give birth to a son. Yet after all that, God now demands a child sacrifice when Isaac is still a boy. When Abraham is confronted with this strange demand, he does not hesitate and he gets himself ready right away. After three days of traveling, they arrive at the destination. Abraham then says to his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. I wonder what was going through Abraham's mind when he said this. Was he afraid to tell his servant that his God 
had told him to sacrifice his son? Or did Abraham really know that God would not let him go through with this? As both Abraham and Isaac are walking along, the young Isaac notices the wood, the live coals, the knife, and also the fact that the lamb required for sacrifice is missing. So the child asks his father about this. Abraham's response was that God will provide one. Again, it is difficult to know exactly what is going on inside Abraham's mind. If Abraham tells the truth, then Isaac might run away. Abraham, as old as he is, definitely will not be able to catch up to him. So was Abraham lying? Or did he really believe that God would provide a lamb for him at the last minute? This begs the question, is Abraham's faith so deep and secure that he knew God would not test him? If that is the case, then is it really a test of faith? It is kind of like putting on a surprise birthday party and the person finds out beforehand that there will be a surprise party for him. Thus, it really is not a surprise party and it takes the fun out of the event. Likewise, if Abraham really knew, then it would not be a real test. Another dimension to this story is that during the time of Abraham, the child sacrifice was widely practiced by Phoenicians and Canaanites. It was even mentioned in, in the Old Testament as the text shows. So after having Abraham go through this event, was God telling Abraham that child sacrifice is wrong? Did God change the morality of child sacrifice through Abraham? Because the story is a test, the story assumes that it is wrong and emotionally challenging to kill your own child, even though it is a sacrifice. There's a point in the story where Abraham must bind Isaac and put him on the altar. If this story were to be made into a movie, how would a director portray the scene? Did Abraham hurt Isaac to render him incapacitated? Did Isaac scream and cry? Or did Abraham simply tell the truth to Isaac and Isaac went along with the wishes of his father? It is also interesting to think about how Abraham held a knife as to stab his son. How did he grab it? Did he raise the knife high in the air? Or did Abraham press the knife into Isaac's neck? Did Abraham make a cut and draw some blood? Exactly how close did God allow Abraham to kill before intervening? When this topic was brought up in my Old Testament class, the professor remarked that the scene can be viewed as a prelude to much of the persecution of the Jews in their long history. Persecutions and bloodshed were common features in the Hebrew people's long history that began here, leading up to the Holocaust. This passage is a bit disturbing. When we see that this story was a ploy by God to test Abraham, it is a cruel manipulation of power. Instead of being angry at God for this trauma, Abraham decided to name the mountain the Lord provides. It is also up on this mountain that King Solomon built his temple. Abraham did not see this place as a place where God scared the pants off of him, but a place where God provides. In a time of trial and temptation, Abraham learned that God did not abandon him, but God provided for him and his family. One might wonder as to why this story even made it into the Bible. What value does it serve? This story asks, what is more important, fidelity to God or the value of human relationships? Two years ago, there was a petition to the General Council that was brought forth at the Toronto Conference Annual Meeting. The motion was presented as a new way of doing the work of justice in the church. The motion stated that 
Building human relationships should be the new way to handle the work of justice because that should be considered more important than justice, which I strongly disagreed with. At the General Council, it failed to pass. If Abraham thought his relationship to his son was more important than God, God then, then he would have just stayed home. For Abraham, he believed that his relationship to God was more important. Another way of saying this is that our relationship with truth is more important. Our relationship to justice is more important. Our relationship to peace is more important. More important than what? More important than our finances? More important than political, social, ethnic, or cultural affiliations? If human relationships are more important, then are we okay with a judge who gives a lighter sentence because he knows someone who knows the guilty party? Absolutely not. As the story unfolds, God did not allow Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. Ultimately, though other gods may ask of that, but the God of Abraham does not. Furthermore, God also does not allow human sacrifices in the name of economic profit or political power. Yet human lives are still sacrificed in the form of environmental destruction, harmful chemicals, racial hatred, dangerous working conditions, and lately COVID-19 premature easing of restrictions. In the way the story is presented, Abraham successfully passed the test and he was once again reassured that he will be the father to a great nation. God knew all along that Abraham was worthy to bestow such an honor. Through this drama, all of us now know why that is so. But we also know that our relationship to God of truth, God of justice, and God of peace matters more than anything else in life. So we live in that faith and conviction. Thanks be to God.